Hey, in this video we're going to talk about the memory data cache options that you have using an application in ASP.NET. So let's get started here with our Visual Studio project here. So I'm going to select an ASP.NET web application. So there's a lot of different choices. Make sure you get this exact one if you want to follow my example here. So let's give it a name. So I'm going to call it Memory Cache Example App and let's create it. Now I'm going to select the uh, MVC format here and just see how I've got everything checked here. No authentication. MVC is checked. And this will create us a small uh, default application that we can play with. So let's see what's been created for us. There is a controller here and you can see that there are some views. And so you can see that inside the views folder, there's a home folder and several other things. Let's go ahead and run the app and see what it looks like. So here's the default application. You can see it's up and running. It is not important really what's here. I just wanted to make sure that it's, it's working correctly. So you can see we've got our basic app. Now we're gonna add some new features to it and then we're going to test it. All right, so let's close the application. The first thing I want to do is to go into the models and I'm going to add a new item. So let's go and add a class. I'm going to call mine user model. So for the user model, I'm just going to create two properties. I'm going to call one the name property, which is a string, and the other one, which is a password, which is also a string. And then let's generate a constructor so that way we have some data to play with. Okay, so we're going to close the user model. We don't need to do anything more there. Let's go into the controller and let's see what the options are. So in the controller, we have an index, about, and a contact. I'm going to create a new event. So the event that I'm going to create is called get users. It's like an action result like the others. And uh, the return value is going to be the type content, which is a string. And so right now I'm just going to display a string to the browser. Let's see if it works. All right, so you can see that the application's up and running. Now I'm going into the home controller, as we had before, and I'm going to put in get users as the event. And you can see that the actual display is working. So make sure that you got this up to date here. Now we're going to add some things to display actual users. So the first thing that I'm going to demonstrate is how to generate a list of users. And so we'll just create a new one. We're going to use the user model as the type of list that we're creating. And we're going to later then change this into a cached version, but we got to get the application working in normal mode first. So in the next part, I'm going to generate some new users. So I'm just going to invent some people. So let's do users.add, and inside of the parentheses, we'll create a new user inline. So it's going to be new user model, and then the parameter is a username and password. So let's copy and paste this thing a few times and create several, maybe five different users that we can display. Now, after we have all the users created, I'm interested in generating a list of those users inside of this content. So let's select the phrase that we put in there and delete the string. And then we're going to import a new class. So let's generate a new version of JavaScript Serializer. So JavaScript Serializer is going to translate from a list of objects to a string. Now you can see that I need to import it. So I select the item, choose the import to the library called Serialization. And then we can use the function named serialize. And we can put in parentheses whatever we want to serialize, which is our list of users. So this should return a string, and then we should be able to display it in the browser as kind of a JSON data. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to run the application and then add on the URL that we're talking about here, which is home slash get users. Then you can see that all of these people that I created are now serialized into a string. So, so far, this is not anything to do with the cache. What I've demonstrated is that this is just printing things to the screen. So let's go back into the code here. And you can see that this section here that is just before the return statement is recreating a new list of users every time. This is nearly instantaneous. It doesn't take any time at all. But what if this were from a data source that was very slow, such as a database that were far away, it were on the other side of the world, and to retrieve data from it took literally seconds, horrible to think of, in performance times for an application. 
Let's generate the next version now that uses caching. So now I want to enable caching in my system. So to be able to do this, I need to go to the project, right click it, choose add a reference. Once the reference comes up, I'm going to go to the assemblies area and choose search for cache. And when I find it, I'm going to check mark the caching option and click OK. So now this application should be able to do caching. So let's just collapse this references here. So now I'm going to make a reference to the memory cache. So I'm going to create a variable. Let's call it cache. And it's going to be equal to memory cache. And you can see I'm struggling to get memory cache typed here. So I need to type in memory cache and then import it from the uh, appropriate library here and then follow it with the dot default feature. So this will create a place in the computer's memory that it will store temporary values. So now after I declare the users, I'm going to insert a new line below it. I want to take the users and assign it from the value that should be saved in the cache. So let's say cache.get and this tag that I'm going to call users may or may not have values in it, but if it does have any values in it, we'll send it to the users. Now you can see that there's a red line here that says, hey, you've got to uh, cast this, you have to convert it. So one way to do it is to put in a cast statement before it. So the next statement down is to check to see if there was actually anything uh, that came from the cache. So we'll, we'll ask if users equals null. If it equals null, that means there was nothing in the cache and users is undefined. And then we'll just create the users like we did just a few minutes ago. Now the interesting part of caching is that you don't have to go back to the source and recreate the users from scratch. So the else statement is going to assume that the users were in the memory cache. So to prove to myself that this application is actually working, I'm going to print some statements to the console. So we could put in logging, that would be the right way to do it, but to avoid having to do some extra coding, I'm going to use system.diagnostics.debug.writeline. And so that'll print out to the console or the output. Now I'm going to put the message that says, the users were not in the cache, so I got them from the data source. And we're going to assume that this is a slow data source, remember. And I'm going to also put a timestamp. Now copy and paste this and we'll put it in the else statement to say, hey, we didn't need to get them from the uh, actual source, they came from the cache. If there is nothing from the cache and it's null, then we should probably define this, uh, this users as a new list again. So I'm going to copy and paste just a par partial section of that line. So we'll create a new list of users. Now what we want to do after we create this list is put it in the cache. So the process of putting the users into a cache is simply to say cache.set and then the name of the item in the cache, we'll call it users with a string, and then the object or the list of things that we're going to put in, which is users. Now you can see that there is a problem with this. It says there's an error. And so what's missing is another parameter called the policy. And we need to create this object here. A policy is going to tell the cache how often we should be refreshed. So now let's define this policy uh, variable. So we'll say var policy equals new. And the thing that we're looking for is called a cache item policy. And make sure you put parentheses there because this is, this is a class. Then you put a dot to say we're going to have an absolute expiration. And on the same line, we can also add another equal sign. And we're going to say that the absolute expiration time for this cache will be 60 seconds from now. Or we could change it to how we have it here is date time dot now dot add minutes. Add minutes one, or you could add seconds or add milliseconds. So there's different ways to add your different times. But this will let the uh, policy expire in 60 seconds. Okay, so now we should see that we have uh, people in the cache and uh, it should update every 60 seconds. Let's see if it runs. Okay, so we're gonna run the application and as soon as it gets launched here, I'm gonna type in slash home slash get users and we can see that the uh, users show up again. Now, we should look down at the bottom here at the uh, output. So I'm going to shrink this, uh, this browser so I can see a little better. 
But now down here in the bottom, you can see that it says the users were not in the cache. I got them from the data source, slow, and then it tells me exactly what time it happened. And I'm going to refresh the page. And now you can see that it says the second time it refreshed the page, it says the users were in the data cache, which is fast. And then it gives me the time again. Now I'm going to keep refreshing this every few seconds, and you can see the time expires. So let's advance the video a little bit faster, and we'll see if this will expire after a minute is passed. So you can see that after 60 seconds passes, the application no longer goes to the cache to get its source. It says, I'm going to go back to the original place, and it uh, would assume that it would take longer. So now that you've seen the application run again, let's go back and look at the, uh, look at the messages. So this line here says, I put the people into memory from the original data source. And then the second uh, output line was down here that says, the items were in the cache, and I displayed them from there. So this here is a real simple example. If uh, we had a real application going on, we wouldn't be generating a list of users right here in the uh, controller. We would go out to the database and fetch them, or maybe to another website on another planet, and it would take a long time to get here. So that's the point of a cache, is to have a locally, quick, accessible place where you can get frequently used data. So, good example here for showing you how to use caching in ASP.NET.